Hey everyone, it's Joe and Isaias from The Automator, and in this video, we're going to show you this new interface on reporting errors in version 2. It's really cool, I think. And uh, <laughs> if you stick around to the end, you're going to see also how to interpret this new call stack identification they show you, which is, uh, it's a little bit kind of cryptic when you're not used to it. So <laughs> let's, uh, let's jump into this here. Exactly. So let's go ahead and show you uh, what are we referring to. So I have a little piece of code that what it's going to do is actually fail. So this particular uh, line down here, I'm trying to connect to something that doesn't exist. And uh, as it is a com object, I will get an error. I'm making sure that I'm running with version one of auto hotkey. So let me check on something. Oh. And this is the line that is going to fail. I go ahead and run it and notice what I get. Operation unavailable, you know, try to connect. And usually this has happened to you at some point, uh, either if it is just connecting to a com object or whatever, at some point our hotkey is going to fail and you're going to see this message. Usually you have two options, continue running the script, yes or no, that's it. And uh, okay, it tells you which line the error is at, but usually the error is really complex to understand. So it is a little bit annoying to try to debug this. In version two, actually recently with version beta 0.7, there was a total remap. He redid this whole screen and I find it to be more helpful actually for many reasons. The first one is that it, it, this is just like the main one. This is a message box. You cannot do anything with it. You can do control C and it would just copy the whole thing like this, right? Just in case you didn't know, you can control copy any message box, but that might not be very helpful when the script is too big. But in version two, you will get this message is a little bit more compact. It doesn't show us many lines, which might be confusing in certain situations. Second of all, it uh, highlights which is the line that is actually the problematic one. Yeah, and cool. you can select stuff in here. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Uh, <laughs> and just that's select good. and copy just that one thing, right? So this is extremely useful. And not only that, you do have some buttons out here in which you can click on edit, which would open up your script to edit it, okay? Um, actually, it's interesting that it didn't use my default editor. I don't know why. You can reload your script or exit the application, which is great. You can continue executing. So if, if the error thrown is something that you can con recover from or you can continue the next lines, you just hit here and it will just ignore the error and continue with the next ones. So you could do that if it is not like a very important thing that you really need on the next lines, for example. Or you can just simply abort the operation with we just stop there and it doesn't exit the app, but it would just keep the app running if it has hotkeys and stuff like that. So there's a there's this situation in which, for example, if I have a hotkey F1 that does something and F2 is the hotkey that actually failed, I don't want to shut down the whole script. I just want to stop this action here and keep the script running. I could do that too. So these buttons here are extremely helpful. And as you mentioned, there is this new thing that, that it says call the uh, show the call stack. What the heck does that mean? Well, if you take a look at my code, my code just calls a function called connect, but that function is actually calling another function that is called get outlook. And in that function is where I'm trying to connect. And now notice that the one failing is this one. But sometimes, especially if the program is really big, you want to know how the heck did I got there? Like, what? how did I got to that position? The call stack, when you click on this, gives you a list of the functions and methods that were called. So you were in the auto execute section and they are always um, sorted. Like the last function called is at the top and the first function called is at the bottom. So we were on the auto execute section, then we called the connect function, the connect function actually called the get outlook and get outlook is the one that called that line. So it actually gives you kind of like a history of how you got there, which is extremely useful, especially if you have very big and complex uh, scripts that sometimes you don't know, okay, so I got this error. How the heck did I get there? <laughs> you know, it's really good for debugging. 
I was going to say, this is actually giving you some debug information without having a debugger. You know, exactly. Like it's, it's exactly great because even if your editor doesn't have that, you can at least get the first steps. I know which line failed. I know how I got to that line. And I have a few actions that allow me to just, you know, well, start and, debugging. And they, they made it very clear of that operation unavailable, the actual error. The other one, it's it's there, but it's just, you know, with the different coloring, it helps. Right. Out. Really that's helps that's another thing. The different coloring and stuff that he did is amazingly good. Um, and here uh, we do have the help button that would actually just open the help file if you want to just quickly search for that particular thing or whatever. I, you see, maybe he'll make it where that's hyperlinked. Right to like have maybe it, you click it, but and it basically, go. yeah. If I could just double, you know, as I can copy stuff now, right. I could just double click that, open my help file, and at least it's a little bit easier. I can just start from there. You see sure. what I mean? Oh, so, yeah. So, yeah. so it, it is a little bit better than uh, the older version of it, which actually was extremely restrictive. You could <laughs> look at that. that. It, it's can you take a screenshot of that real quickly, move it to the side, and put the other one up? Right, sure. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Oh, um, oh my God! Our screen clipping tool work. I don't. I don't have it always starting up by itself. <laughs> That's what happens. <laughs> I, I. You know what? I have to add that option that it auto starts. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because I do have. That, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Uh, so here we go. Here's this Windows snipping tool. So I've got it right about here. And now, if I run this one and version two, I should just compare. Yeah, look, it. look at those two differences. And what's you know what's really kind of crazy, although you did mention it, the one on the right, you can't. If it was really the message box, you could hit Control C and get the text, but it gets everything, all, all of it. Yeah. And 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 sometimes notice that this is getting like twenty lines. Right. And this right. situation is a little bit clearer, but there are some situations in which I have a lot of code that. It looks funky. And right. this little arrow here oh, is not enough, see. right? It's not enough for you to know exactly which line. And notice that line 11 is kind of like wrapped around. So right. it's not really clear that that was right. the so, so it is kind of like a you have to know what is going this, on in order to actually the troubleshoot this one. <laughs> now, I don't know if you've tested this yet, or maybe you already know. If, if the error, if you were using an include, and the error was actually in a different file. Would it would it also yes. in version two tell you that's the file? Yes, that's is, the file, of course. Yeah. That's what it throws me a lot is Right, yeah, sure. Is, uh, like, so, oh, I don't have five hundred lines in this, you know, exactly. file. And I'm like, <laughs> that's right, that's right. So let's go ahead and include one. So yeah. let's go ahead and include I do have uh let's say Excel slash Excel. I think that's a library that I have around. Um and let me just throw something in it. So if I go to the library, I have Excel here, the Excel file, I have it there. I had that I, one as well until I read <laughs> mine, but yeah, it was it has some good stuff in it. Right. Now I will just uh throw. I I just have to do that. That should definitely create a problem on my script. Uh so if I try to run it, yeah. So uh here we go. This line does not contain a recognized action. Um, we do have the line, the text that has it, which line it was, and what is the file that has it. Yeah. And actually, the, the error that I'm getting is something else. It is right. on a That's different ironic. file. Right. It is right. totally ironic because what happens is but that it, it seems to me that I, yeah, I could just click on it and go to the line. It said that it was what? Line 931. We so should, uh, control G. 931 and there you go uh, it is just a little line that uh -huh. uh, little dash that was there for me it is easy to spot those guys now now that i fix the error i just have to reload my script right. now I, I should have another error okay so right. there is a throw preceding it that is the throw that i added okay so where well it is on well excel constants that's the last thing and excel that's line interesting 16. that your other one gave you the link actually to the file and this one for some reason is because i'm actually this is not a problem this is not my throw this is something uh, let me explain uh, let me show you exactly what i need what i mean by this too 
oh look this one oh i know why it didn't open the the default editor because my file was um uh, dot code not dot hk so oh. here's the thing if you put a return here the next line doesn't get executed you remember what we were talking about so um uh, message box true i will get an error well not not an error this is a warning it's a warning hey you have a command down here that is never gonna get executed because of something else and so right now the error that we're seeing right now the one that i see here it's just tell it's just warning me and notice that it says warning and i think one of the things that he should do is add an icon in there like a warning icon yeah, that would be really nice. icon yeah. that would actually kind of like drive what what that one is a warning and the other right. one is not but it's just warning you hey this line is never going to be executed because of x reason let's see what is this or at least change the color of the font that you're using right and 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 then you can actually as i mentioned before notice that the other one gave me an abort action but this one gives me a continue this is just a warning i can continue with my script and then now this is the exception thrown and now it gives me the call stack but now i do not see the link to the file that is interesting too it's true um, but for some reason it is because there is some other files are, are in front I mean, i'm not really sure why that is I do have the call stack, but that's it. So, so, so in general, it, it does allow me to at least know where the error is coming yeah, from right. and which file it is. It's a little bit better than probably, you know what? Probably he's not licking it because there are two different files, right? The other one was only one file, right? Right. Maybe that that might be one of the things. But again, now in this case, I cannot continue from this one. This is a, an I throw I've thrown an error, and that error was not handled. Now I cannot continue. Well, I could either reload, exit the app, or just simply abort. That's it. So this is something. This looks like a different kind of error. Notice that this one says error. The other one was an exception, and that's what I mentioned before. There is a difference between an error and an exception. The, it is a little bit pedantic and stuff, but this, uh, I understand, okay, this is an error in the code, and this is not even executing the script because it stopped before executing. And for that reason, it actually linked to it. But the other one is an exception thrown inside the code. It's already running. So it's a little bit different. Um, so again, I think the interface for errors in version two is getting a little bit better, which is again, one of the main reasons why I'm basically going a little bit um, more into developing with version two. It has a lot of improvements. I know it's a little bit harder. I know it's a little bit more complex, but after a while you will actually get used to a lot of things that you will say like, I missed that in version one. <laughs> so yeah, that's how it goes. Yeah, it's awesome. So thank you. And so for you watching, you know, how do you guys, when you, these errors come up, do you go, do you look at that message? Do you jump to it? Are you using an editor that has a debugger? What do you do with it? Do you, do you use more than message box for debugging? I'm just curious. <laughs> exactly. Um, it, the link over my head right now, that's for, for, we have a lot of videos on version two and clearly it, there's some, this is some pr pretty cool stuff that he's making available. Um, I also have a, a lot of videos on debugging and depending on your editor, you know, that's what um, I have them for Site for Auto Hotkey, for HK Studio, and then I think I have some of the ones that um, almost every time Isaias is doing anything in VS Code, he's debugging and demonstrating debugging. So yeah, um, check them out if you're new to debugging. But uh, please like if this video helped you at all and you're interested or want to see more from us. It'll help us. And subscribe. Thank you.